Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my fantastic co hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. And today, for I think the first time, we've had Michelle on, I think it's the first time, uh, we've uh, got two two wonderful guests today uh, and both have been with us before but separately uh, and both are probably two of my favorite podcasts to be honest that we've done and that's not even a lie um so we've got our wasabi researcher and contributor yuval nothing much uh, and wasabi wallet founder uh, adam fixer um again for the second time so uh, guys how are you both doing today hey guys, uh, good it's good. nice to see you again doing great absolutely and yuval you all good Yep. Awesome. Uh, okay. Good to hear it. No, no worries. That's all. That's all it was. Just checking everyone's uh, happy today. Uh, yeah, I suppose uh, no massive agenda uh, as per usual with our podcasts. But I just wanted to kick us off with the first question: What are you both up to at the? This is a, this is a very vague question as well. So feel free to come back to me with whatever. What are you both up to right now? You know, how are things going at Wasabi? What is uh, what is what is it that you're working on at this moment in time? What's got you excited? You know, the same old thing. Just try to create a decentralized, censorship resistant, a permissionless money. You know? <laughs> gotcha. Okay. And I guess like because um, Adam, we spoke in our first podcast more about how you came up with like, how you end up working on Wasabi and and kind of what you guys were up to at the time, which obviously was probably, I'm guessing, nearly a year ago. Uh, but Yuval, like one thing we discussed a lot about, um, about like what, what, how you kind of came into Bitcoin. And we, we went like super down the rabbit hole with regards to the meaning of it to yourself and to the everyone. And I, I loved it, to be honest. Um, but I suppose one thing we never asked you in the first podcast was, hey, how... Uh, how did you end up getting, I don't think we asked this, how did you end up getting involved in the Wasabi project? I, th I think we kind of touched on it, but like, how did you get involved in it? And like, what are you specifically actually contributing with and working on right now, I guess, is the, is the question. So I think it was, I don't, COVID messed up my uh, sense of time, but um, there was a, a bug in the original, like Wasabi 1.0 had uh, uh, the first version of Zerolink. And then that was changed with the like denomination multiplier. So part of the reason that was changed is because of a, a bug that I found. And that's kind of how I, I got my foot in the door. And um, I had already been obsessed by that point for, I think, well over a year, but like how how you handle uh, arbitrary amounts in coin joins. Um, so once I had my foot in the door um, and um, uh, I, I got people to to listen, uh, I guess it just kind of gradually progressed where I became like, um, th there was the Wasabi Research Club. Um, so that was like a weekly call to discuss like different research papers. Uh, so Adam uh, asked me to to join into to those conversations, and um, eventually from there, like a, a clear direction for Wasabi was uh, kind of crystallized. And uh, I guess by that point, it was uh, too late to get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We found the bug in the original implementation of of coin joins and uh, and. I, I have to admit, for a while, I didn't really listen to to him because um, because he's he's very very smart, and I didn't actually think that such smart people, you know, exist in this world, and and um, and and I didn't understand. But but he kept persisting, and I realized that uh, oh wow, uh, there are a lot of things things under the surface there that I originally didn't recognize and uh, and we we had a, a longer period of uh, of like um, well you know just exchanging ideas and eventually he, one of his his main idea just become so integral to wasabi wallet which is uh, wabisabi 
uh, right, the whole Wasabi 2.0 stuff that he stick around, I hope, for, for a long time, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to see like um, how different people ended up working uh, on like any of these priv- like whether it's CoinJoin or like Wasabi Wallet itself or like different privacy implementations. It feels like um, it feels like to me, no one ever seems to kind of head out with the intention. It's, <laughs> everyone seems to kind of stumble into it somewhere or another, but then kind of realizes, yeah, I think I'd like to work on this, and then persists. That seems to be anyway how it how it happens. Like um, like some of my favorite people I've met Bitcoin wise have been I think all to all strangely enough have all been to do with wasabi um probably my favorite pick was you've got uh like adam gibson yourself adam your vow like obviously uh your podcast is probably one of my favorites um so it's kind of bizarre actually now i think about it uh but that uh, people all seem to have a likable quality but also seem to kind of stumble into to privacy um i guess that's that's the way i feel about it um i suppose um yeah i guess there because obviously you said about wasabi 2.0 and i remember we briefly talked about it i think adam when you were on last time are there any further updates on on what's going on there like is there anything interesting going on anything uh, i don't know anything exciting that you can tell people who are listening sure and i like to poke nothing much with this too because um so in my opinion uh, everything is pretty much ready right we, we just have to put on the final you know um paint at the, at the house and things are, are ready. But uh, some people at the at Wasabi have some, some more things that they want to do. And I think nothing much is the, has, has the most ambitious ideas. So I'm wondering nothing much uh, when, when 2.0. I guess I think maybe parts of the roof are missing in the analogy but yeah there's not a lot of like i I, i'm not uh confident that we're there yet but i can i can see the the end um and i think what it boils down to is we made um a very big decision to kind of take away like Wasabi 1.0 places a lot of uh, responsibilities on the user to use it correctly, to understand what UTXOs are, to understand uh, what coin joins are, and to apply this tool in a way that um, achieves their desired uh, goal, which, I mean, privacy is a very vague goal. You might be doing it for uh, personal safety. Maybe that's safety against your counterparties. Maybe it's safety against your oppressive government. Uh, maybe it's just uh, financial confidentiality. Um, th- there's many, many reasons, um, diverse use cases and so on. And in a way, like Wasabi 1.0 said, uh, okay, here's a, here's a, a tool um, and use it and you can get a, a benefit. Uh, whereas Wasabi, 1, uh, Wasabi 2.0 is um, going for a, a much more ambitious um, as a product, it's it's trying to hide the, those details. It's it's trying to say like, if you just want to use Bitcoin and you want to feel safer, you want to feel like your privacy is um, uh, taken care of. Um, you don't need to read about coin joins. You don't need to learn what a UTXO is. Um, that stuff might help you to use it better, but it's not a requirement anymore. Um, and that's, um, I guess, a, a, like a hugely complicated, like uh, uh, this sort of fractal mess of uh, uh, problems within problems within problems uh, where um, like it's very easy to get lost in the details. And that's exactly what I've been doing for, I guess, well over a year now. Um, and we're, I think we're at the point where we, we have a, a clear enough idea of um, what are, or, or at least I have a clear enough idea of what I think um, is like a minimally viable thing. And uh, the path to there uh, seems uh, illuminated. Like it, 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 there's, uh, there doesn't seem to be like any huge uh, surprises lurking. Um, and over the last year, we've uh, some, some, th- some challenges uh, uh, were discovered as surprises and some challenges were uh, possible to anticipate. Uh, I had a lot of um, 
uh, I think I was much more pessimistic about how difficult the task at hand is. And uh, because of this, I was uh, for a long while uh, fairly adamant about um, certain features being uh, re required. And eventually I became convinced that actually, no, we can wait with that for later. And um, so I guess it's kind of like this process of uh, meeting in the middle. And um, and I think we're, we're, we're almost there. Um, uh, there, there's still a few things that are like uh, keeping me up at night, um, but uh, it, it feels like it's it's definitely within reach now. Yuval, uh, last time uh, you were on, we were talking about uh, Wasabi 2.0 and how you were trying to like abstract away the coin join thing, like you just mentioned. Um, to where like a normal user can can use Bitcoin without having to worry about that. And then also when we interviewed Paul Pewey from Edge Wallet, like their strategy is kind of that too. Like they're trying to incorporate, I guess, uh, certain privacy features, but they want like their main thing is the user experience and abstracting it away. So um, how, how are you guys improving on this? Like will a, a user have to choose UTXOs and stuff like that still uh, with coin control? Or is that just going to be like, you're not going to see it. It's happening behind the scenes. So the problem is that uh, right now, uh, people want to use Bitcoin, right? Like there is a Salvador, a whole population of, of people just just gets on to use Bitcoin, right? And and what, what are they going to do? Well, they are not going to use the Sabi wallet. They are not going to use Bitcoin core. They are not going to use anything not even a non-custodial wallet they will use TO or other custodial wallets because you know what it actually comes down to is to communicate value to another person and that's that's what they want and they don't want to go into the details so if they 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 look at something like wasabi wallet then it's a uh, is gonna be like, what the heck is going on here? I have a bunch of coins, a rows of coins. Um, I want to receive money, send money. It's 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 different because we expose concepts to the user. Those I don't actually want to say that it was uh, necessary to expose them for zero link, uh, but certainly the implementation of the wallet was much faster because we exposed the coin list and and, and some kind of stuff. Um, you know, there there was a paper called from the Tor Tor Anonymity Network developers called um, Usability and Network Effect. Um, anonymity loves company and one of the point in that research paper was that uh, how how bad decisions are made and this is so typical for software engineering that uh, the the designer of the system delegates the decision the researcher of the system delegates the decision to the designer of the system. The designer of the system delegates to the implementers of the system. The implementers of the decision delegates it to the users. So basically, uh, the researcher cannot make a decision. Therefore, it delegates optionality to the users to, down the line to a least capable person to make a decision and the user end up having to choose his encryption method and his his software right like the user is the least capable of doing that now Wasabi 2.0 we if we kind of deep double down on the I want to send money to you and everything else is just fiction notion friction notion so yeah, you well, how does the current one work? Yeah, I would say Wasabi 1.0 delegates to the user the decision of how much to coin join, uh, when to coin join. Um, not exactly what to coin join, because if you queue a bunch of coins for coin joining together, the wallet still picks you know the specific combination. Um, but I mean, if you constrain it, only queue one coin at a time, then now the user is in charge of that uh, as well. Um, it also delegates to the user um, uh, 
the decision of which coins are appropriate to use together in a transaction to send a payment. Um, so th there's a lot that has been externalized in this way to, to end users. Um, and those are difficult decisions to, to make. Um, um, like, I don't know, as somebody who's been like obsessed with the, this like problem space for, um, I guess, four years now, uh, I still feel like intimidated by um, like playing through in my mind, like what the consequences of a specific decision might end up being and whether or not that's acceptable for me. That's a, that's a big, right. It's not like choosing a fee rate. Um, it's, um, it's something that can really um, have like, um, I don't know, go, going back to like my first year of, of using Bitcoin and um, just taking this approach of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to figure it out once I actually start getting some mileage with this thing. And then realizing that um, there was regret that I introduced into my life that I couldn't really anticipate. Like, why did I buy that thing on that day? Why did I use that coin? Why did I use that wallet that hid information that I now think is, is critical? Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big burden for users to bear. And I think the, the biggest challenge is that a lot of users don't even realize like so much of the design language of, of Bitcoin wallets is tr trying to emulate the familiarity of PayPal or of a, a bank account or, um, so it, it kind of hides these, um, ultimately very consequential things. Um, and yeah, the, the, I guess with Wasabi 2.0, like uh, we've made a very deliberate decision that the, the experience that we're trying to offer is actually going to be quite similar to this um, problematic um, set of um, uh, concepts of uh, visual metaphors of uh, UI patterns and so on that that Bitcoin wallets have have adopted already, um, but we are going to do it in in such a way where the the coin join stuff is happening in between your payments. So you receive a coin um, from somebody else. the The workflow for that is is quite similar. You generate an address and then they send a transaction and that transaction uh, funds your address with, with a new coin that has some arbitrary amount. And normally in Wasabi, at that point, you would be making a decision. You would you see the little red uh, shield icon that says, um, this is not private, and there would be a label associated with that coin. And then you would queue it, and eventually uh, you would decide uh, that, I mean, that, that coin gets destroyed, it gets replaced with, um, uh, some other coin that maybe has more privacy. And at some point you would be deciding, okay, this is good enough for me to use to make some other payment. Um, and the everything in the middle between those two points, we're now trying to automate and make uh, transparent. So um, um, basically the wallet will need to decide, um, like you, you generate a, a receive address, um, the wallet notices that a payment came in, and then if auto coin join is enabled, um, the sequence of decisions um, leading up to the point where you stop coin joining, including exactly which coins to choose, what um, in, in this uh, new coin join protocol, what output amounts to register, um, when to do that, uh, at what fee rate. Um, all of these decisions um, are going to be now the responsibility of the, the wallet. And in this way, we can hopefully um, make this basically indistinguishable from a traditional Bitcoin wallet, the kind of wallet that does externalize or doesn't even give you the option of choosing privacy. The only user perceptible uh, difference um, uh, in the ideal case would be that you pay slightly more uh, in fees. Um, and um, that's, yeah, yeah that, that, that's our goal, uh, I think. Adam, do you agree? Yes, exactly. So it's going to be just an, any other Bitcoin wallet. 
in terms of user experience, but with privacy. There's like privacy baked in. Um, it makes sense because we, I mean, I personally, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we're kind of at this muddy point where we're going from early adopters to Bitcoin into early majority. It feels like we're kind of at that like level now where it's starting to switch. And obviously at that point, there's only going to be so many people who are willing to use like a uh, more complex, more uh, bare bones, but like more customizable option when it comes to privacy and sending and receiving Bitcoin. Um, do, are you guys going to have a a switch or anything that like will allow people to turn off and on? You know, you know I mean, like, are you going to have like the ability for people if they really want to, to then kind of get that Wasabi 1.0 kind of experience out of the new Wasabi? Or is that just going to be like, hey, look, we've we've made X, Y, Z decisions for a reason. Like it will be private. It will, you know, what, how's that going to go? Is that, is it, which way is it, which way are you going to go? Is it kind of going to have a switch sort of thing? Or is it going to be um, just, you know, baked in, that's it. You get what you get. So actually for existing wallets, uh, you know, because people are used to a specific user experience. So we are not going to completely take that away. So existing wallets will default to, to, the, to the manual coin join experience. But every new wallet created in Wasabi is going to have the automatic coin join in the background. And of course, they can turn it off. Maybe there will be an option at wallet creation to turn it off. I, I don't know. But uh, we're not trying to like, you know, force the users that, hey, uh, you used it this space so far and now you you have to use it this, this other way. Try to make the transition much more graceful, right? Um, I mean, okay, so this was also an interesting decision that we made that uh, okay, so everything right now is completely manual. I have to manually do this stuff. And taking away this manual configurability um, and only implementing, let's say, 70% of the, of the existing uh, features. So the coin list becomes uh, clusters. Uh, no, never mind. The, the, the point is that taking it, this functionality away is, is a is a big decision, right? But what we recognized is that, well, you know, if we, if we, if it's not possible to abstract away the privacy stuff from Bitcoin, then Bitcoin is never going to be private, right? Because that's just what people want. They want simplicity. They want the software that they are using to to drain their brain as little as possible and have other brain power for other stuff in their life, right? 